Dear students, I welcome you back to the class of geometric design. We have been discussing the design of facilities and under that in the previous interaction we talked about the bus shelters and the truck laybys. In today's interaction we are going to talk about the bus rapid transit facilities. Now, in the case of bus rapid transit facilities we are going to look at the specific things related to the design aspects and not the operational aspects. Now, when we talk about the bus rapid transit what exactly is this system and how it is helpful is what we are going to talk now. Now, this BRT system is a case where we are trying to transport people from one location to another location by way of a road transportation network where maybe one lane has been dedicated as a bus lane and only the buses are moving in that and they are taking the people from one location to another. Now, when this thing happens then what is going to be there is that the congestion which is possible on rest of the lanes this is going to be quite low and the speeds are going to be increased and that is way lot many people they are going to be transferred from one location to another location in a more smoother convenient and faster manner. So, when we look at this type of an aspect and when many of people are shifting to the bus transportation the another positive thing which may happen is that there is going to be less of emissions and pollutions and the faster movement will also help in the further economic development and the improvement in the GDP of our country. Now, when we look at this system now this system can be utilized for different capacities which are defined in terms of a persons per hour per direction that is PPHD uh, values are there and they can vary from 2000 to 45000. So, there are different ways in which the system can be operated and accordingly the values of capacity are going to be different. And another positive aspect here is that when we are working with this system then the cost aspect of the provision of this type of a facility is quite lower and is almost 110 to 112 of uh, the elevated or the underground facilities which are provided for the mass transportation of the passengers. Now, when we operate a bus transportation here in terms of a BRT then what can be the various ways in which it can be done they are being listed here. They can be in terms of a bus lane it may be bus ways it may be closed BRT system or a hybrid BRT system. Now, when we talk about a bus lane then this bus lane again as already being mentioned in the previous slide on the curb side may be one lane is being dedicated which is defined as bus lane and then rest of the lanes they have been utilized for the other motorized vehicles. So, they will be moving in these lanes. So, this is one type of a system which can be there. The another one is a bus way and in this bus way it is going to be a dedicated bus lane, but along the median. So, that is the difference in one case we are towards the curb side on the left hand side in our condition when we are moving on a carriage way. In other case it is towards the right side means towards the median in a divided system. Now, when we say a closed BRT system then what is the difference here. Now, when we have a bus lane and it is being done by way of marking then there are possibilities that any other vehicle if that requires can maneuver in this form and can create a problem uh, to the movement of the buses in those dedicated bus lanes. Though these things are not allowed they can be challenged for that penalized for that, but uh, there are possibilities of happening. But in the case of a closed BRT system what happens is that there is an access control. The sides are protected by way of use of delineators and no other vehicle is allowed to get into these particular lanes and only the buses are going to be there. And of course, when it comes to an intersection, so even if you have provided a dedicated bus lane here or a dedicated bus lane here, at this point the buses are going to move in this form, but you cannot control the things here because these access control by way of these delineators which are there they will close at this point. Similarly, they close at this point here and this is going to be an open space which is utilized by rest of the users also. In the case of hybrid 
what happens is <coughs> this is a <coughs> combination of the closed BRT system. So, here the closed BRT and the busways both are there and this is a sort of uh, system which is being used so as to provide an extension. So, in most of the cases it is going to be a closed one. So, the speeds are going to be quite high, but when it opens at some of the locations then there the speeds are going to be lower, but it provides an extension of the services. So, that is a, a positive side of uh, using this type of a hybrid system. Now, here in these photographs you can see that there is a only bus 1 which is being provided towards the curve side and it is also being protected by way of these delineators. We have discussed about these delineators in one of our module. So, it is a dedicated path being provided to the buses only no other vehicle is being allowed to come on this side. In this case where you see on the right hand side again the similar thing has been provided that can be on the curb side again, but it is being done by way of marking only and marking is yellow in color it is a continuous line which defines that no other vehicle is allowed to come towards this side there is a texture surface also being used so as to make it prominent, but still there are possibilities that few of the vehicles if they are trying to maneuver trying to overtake another vehicle can just do this type of a zigzag motion. Here what you can find is a total access control system. So, if you see this photograph there is a station here which is at the center of the total carriageway or the uh, road system being provided in terms of a cross section. It is being protected on either of the side both way movements are being allowed and then there is going to be the connectivity at one of the side so as to the passengers who are there for this system they can come out and can go towards the curb side. Here also you can see a very good system where the buses are flying in both the directions a lot many buses are moving here, but still they are maintaining a gap and they are moving at certain speed. But if you look at on the sides then the type of congestion which is happening you can emphasize and you can find out that what is going to be the travel time when you move by this bus system versus the taxis or the cars. So, this is the beauty of uh, this BRT system. Now, when we have look at this BRT system then IRC 124 talks about it here in this presentation we are going to look at three elements one is corridor another is the BRT station and the third one is the terminal. So, we can see here that there is a station here in this uh, photograph and this is an access part to the passengers towards the curb side it is being protected here. So, a ramp system is being provided a ticketing system is also going to be there okay. and then it is protected here at this level, but then it is open at uh, some other further level. So, this is a sort of a hybrid system which is being operated here. Here the terminal type of a thing is being shown where lot many buses BRT buses they are going to stop here. So, uh, they are going to be there at a particular location with respect to their uh, route number and the passengers are there accordingly. So, this is a on the way intermediate terminal where lot many activities are there and that is how it is being provided. It can be in the form of different other terminals as we see for uh, the buses which are intercity buses and the state transport corporation terminals are there. So, that is uh, another possibility here. So, we are going to look at these things. Now, here you can see that in this one again a continuously controlled system is being shown here at this position the movement of the passengers towards uh, uh, left or right of this uh, dedicated system is being provided. So, the spaces are there there is a station in the center along with a ticketing system etcetera there are uh, two lanes being provided one for either of the direction of the movement. So, this is uh, how the overall system is going to look at when it is a closed system. So, let us talk about the corridor design. Now, in the case of corridor design what exactly we are looking at is the lanes which are being provided and their demarcation with respect to the main carriageway. So, the BRT lane width is very fast thing. Now, when we are having a one way movement then this can be 3.5 to 4 meters wide but if there is a passing system then in that case it should be 4 to 5 meters wide. So, the two buses one bus can pass the another bus so in this particular case 
Another is that we need to provide an island or the dividers or medians so that the traffic which is moving on the main carriageway versus the buses which are moving on the BRT lane, they can be separated out and that is where the minimum width shall be 0.5 meters and when it comes to the crossing locations, then it can be 1 meter. So, this is uh, regarding the medians to be provided as we have seen in the previous uh, slide where the closed system was shown. So, that, that is going to be there. Now, width of the BRT at the known station locations. At the station locations, we have the width of the station also, but at the known station locations, only the lanes are there. So, it shall be minimum 8 meters. When we say minimum 8 meters, it means both movements are going to be there. And when it comes at the station location, the width of the station is also going to be added to it and in that case, it can be minimum 12 meters for non-passing and 16 meters for passing lane configuration. So, it means uh, when you say non-passing for on either side of the station, there is uh, one lane only. So, this is a non-passing condition, but when we say that this is a passing condition, that means on either side of the station, there are going to be two lanes. Then outer width of the median station shall be 4 meters. So, it means if uh, the minimum width here is 4 meters, the lane width is also 4 meter on one side and 4 meter on the other side, then together that is going to be 12 meters and that is what is being talked here. But if we have two lanes on either of the sides, then it can be 4 plus 4 on one side and 4 plus 4 on the other side. So, that means you have 8 and 8 and uh, that is where we are going to have uh, the lane widths being provided in this form. Now, to the extreme side of those uh, cross sections, after the uh, lanes which are being provided for the motorized vehicles are there, the footpaths has to be there. And these footpaths should be at least 1.8 meters wide. We have discussed about that. But when the furniture zone is there, that means there is a multifunctional zone is there, then that should be 3.3 meters wide. If there are cyclists, then the cycle tracks can be incorporated into the cross section. And the carriageway widths which are being used, these are basically used for the motorized vehicles. So, it can be 6 to 6.5 meters wide and instead of 7 or 7.5 meters wide. And uh, when we are having all of these weights and when we are talking about a station versus non-station areas, then there is going to be a change in the cross section. So, a station area means you have 4 meters of the station area, but when you come to the non-station area, then that's 4 meters are not there. So, probably that, that 4 meters can also be utilized for the parallel parking on the side of the carriageway away from this whole system. Now, the height of the elements with respect to the carriageway level are also there. So, where BRT lanes, they are uh, at a station roughly around 0 to 150 mm. That means, they can be at the same level as of the carriageway of the motorized vehicles or it can be 150 mm up. The station height, it has to be fixed based on the, uh, the bus, bus floor level. So, that is uh, another thing. So, they should be at the same level so that the people can seamlessly move in and out of the bus system. If the tabletop crossings or footpaths are provided, they should be 100 to 150 mm high. Cycle tracks, they are 100 mm higher than the carriageway and if the curbside bus shelter is there, which is provided on a footpath and the footpath height is 150 mm. So, these are the heights, uh, relative heights which are being given when the cross section is decided. Here the cross sections are being shown. The first one is for 42 meters uh, ROW. What you can see is that there is a station here. So, this is station is uh, 4 meters wide. Then there is a BRT lane along with the median being provided here or the demarcation being provided by a, a physical feature. Then this comes out to be again 4 meters that is 3.5 meters or 0.5 meters of that. But if you are having the two lanes, that means the passing lane system is there, then it is 3.5 plus 4 plus 0.5. So, it again comes out to be 8 meters on this side. And then we have 6 to 6.5 meters wide uh, lanes for uh, the motorized vehicles on either of the side. We have facility for pedestrians, we can have facility for cyclists and then parking conditions. So, this can be parking, this can be for cycle plus pedestrian. There may be this uh, MFZ is also there. This is multi-function zone. So, likewise the widths are being provided. 
but if it is a case of a known station area, so station is not there that means that width is going to be out and we are left with only 2 lanes. So, we are ha having 8 meters wide system rest of the things remains the same. But when you come to 36 meter ROW, then the changes are going to be there and those changes which we can find it out here is that here what we are providing is one lane on either side of it. When we say one lane, it means 4 meter is already being taken from there and then uh, certain values have been taken from here. So, 0.5 comes from this one and then here also the uh, reductions have been done and that is where we have a reduction as 36 meter ROW. The same conditions are there, one with respect to the station area, another with respect to the non-station area. Then this is for 30 meters. So, in the case of 30 meters, this uh, section remains same. It is 4 meters wide station and 4 meters wide lane including the, the medians or the raised structures or delineators being provided. Here it becomes 6 meters, but the difference comes towards the extreme edges where it is 1 plus 2 being provided instead of in the previous case as we have 3 meters of parking lane was also there. So, that parking lane is not being provided now in this case. So, when it reduces further to 24 meters, then what happens is that uh, this uh, lane is coming on one side only. So, that means directly we are taking out 6 meters and rest of the provisions are going to be same. Not many changes can be done here or in this case. So, the changes are coming beyond the BRT lane system. This is an 18 meter ROW. So, in 18 meter ROW, now one side BRT lane is being provided along with the station. So, here also we are having a reduction and then this system is more or less the same way as being provided. So, that is a difference coming here when you are coming to 18 meters. This is a 16 meter ROW which is totally dedicated to BRT only and along with BRT then uh, we have to provide facility for pedestrians because these are the people who are going to get into this system. So, now we do not have the uh, lanes which are being dedicated to motorized vehicles and that is how this is the type of the cross section which can be provided. So, these are the various cross sections depending on the ROWs available uh, already being defined. Now, let us talk about the BRT station design. Now, when we talk about BRT station as we have looked here, so this is the BRT station and this is the lane. So, we are looking at uh, this uh, sort of a combination here, what it says. The gap between station floor edge and the bus floor shall not be more than 50 mm. So, if this is the floor of the station, so this is the platform and the bus comes and stops here. So, this gap is what we are talking. So, this gap shall not be more than 50 mm, usually it is being kept roughly around 50 mm only. The alignment markings of the Kessel curve should be placed to help bus driver to keep the bus close to the station. Then sliding doors, they should be provided at the station platform which shall open in the front of the bus doors. So, that means the coordination of the two type of doors, one is on this platform itself. So, wherever this door is going to be there, so the at the same location the door of the bus should also come. So, it means the driver has to stop the bus in a very disciplined manner. In out movement path of the passenger shall be such that it prevents fair evasion. That means the people should not just fly away from uh, this location and get down here and then move away. So, they are evasing the fare, that possibility should not be there. So, here we can see in this photograph that uh, this is a sliding door. So, the sliding door of the station and the sliding door of uh, the bus, they are just coinciding with each other and that is where the people have been able to move in and out. We can also see that there are tactile tiles which defines the path to these door locations. So, the bus has been stopped in such a manner that uh, this is being perfectly done. Here in this one what we can see is the gap which is being maintained here. So, whatever is this uh, edge which is coming out, so that should have a, uh, this is being extended by 200 mm, that is what is being written here. And at the same time after that 200 mm, now because this gap is being maintained by the driver, so what is being left is the 50 mm and this 50 mm can be very easily 
crossed. So, what you can see here the gap which is there is this 50 mm and the passengers are scaling that gap very easily. Then another thing is that we may have different type of buses. So, the we have the regular buses which are 12 meters long and they may have two doors, but if you are talking about articulated buses which are longer then they will have four doors. Now, what should be the sizes? The door should be minimum 1200 mm wide and a minimum 400 mm gap be, should be provided between the doors. So, if you are talking about a bus and there are two doors, so then we are looking at the doors like this. So, this is what we are saying that that is 1200, 1200 and in between the 400 mm and accordingly the design of the station is going to be there. So, these two things are again coinciding. The ramps should be provided on one side or on both sides of this uh, platform. So, if you have a, a station, so on the two sides of that we should have the ramps, the people will come through that ramps to this level, higher level and then it has also to be protected. So, uh, railings etcetera can be provided, the tactile tiles as I said has to be provided from the start to end and uh, the slope shall not exceed 1 in 15 which is the uh, most accessible slope for those who are coming on wheelchair. Sufficient space shall be allocated for system information displays and fare collection, these are the two important things. We have talked about the information which needs to be provided at a bus shelter similarly here. And ticketing booth if provided shall be 1.1 meter by 1.5 meters. There should be flap gates being provided for off boarding fare collections. So, this is how it looks like. So, there is uh, this entry or exit. So, we have uh, uh, the ramp here and this ramp we talked about the slope as not steeper than 1 in 15. And then this is a, a straight section. So, we have a ticketing booth at this level, then we have the flare gate. So, the people will cross through those. So, once they have a ticket they show it, it is like simply as the same the mit metro station conditions and this is the overall platform which is there on which the bus is going to come and stop. You can see that the location of the sliding gates are being shown here. So, the bus will come and this bus is going to stop here like this. So, what happens is that the door in the bus is also going to be at this position. Similarly, the bus is coming from this direction. So, the, the, this is being provided in this case it is a symmetrical thing and we are also providing access from both of the sides. In some cases it may happen that it is being provided only at one side. Here you can see that uh, there are tactile tiles being provided. So, there are directional tiles which are taking the person along with the warning tiles. So, the directional and warning tiles are provided which are taking the person to the gate and uh, this is how it is managed. This is a ramp system being provided. So, the entry or exit is going to be there on either of these sides and this is a closed system at this point. So, you have a lane here and these are the barricades being provided. Now, docking base of the BRT. Now, when the, the buses are coming from both the directions or they are coming from the same direction or there are multiple buses, then we have to look at these docking bays as uh, being shown previously. So, they should be staggered for the easy circulation of the passengers. Otherwise, lot of crowd is going to be there at one particular location itself. So, this is one thing needs to be taken care of. And when we are looking at the docking bay, the length of the docking bay for two regular buses of 12 meter length, that should be 26.4 meters. And uh, together with ramps, fare collection area and space for uh, flap gates, etcetera, this comes out to be 70 meter long. So, this is uh, uh, another thing. So, we have uh, two buses which are going to be there. So, this is what we are saying. So, if this bus is 12 meters and if this bus is also 12 meters, then the length of the docking bay is going to be 26.4 meters. The minimum width of the station we have already discussed, it is 4 meters to accommodate waiting and circulating passengers and this shall be minimum 3 meters if there is a one way BRT station. If the bus is not going to stop on either of the side of that station that we can reduce it also. So, here we can see that uh, this is a median station. So, median station is here and it is being provided with an access only 
from this side. So, the passengers can come in and out of this system at this level only. So, uh, this is a ramp and then the ticketing and the fare collection system are going to be there at this one. The buses goes and goes in this form. So, depending on how many buses are going to stop at any point of a time, the length is going to be decided. It is being flared at this because here it is a non station area. So, it can be 8 meters, but then this is going to be minimum 12 meters. So, this is why the flaring has been done at this point. This is another case where uh, more buses are going to be there and the buses are there on both the sides. So, what is being shown here is that the traffic if this is coming like this, then two buses if they are stopping here. So, we are also providing a passing bay and this passing lane and this passing lane the traffic is being taken in and out. So, this is how it is being done and this is a staggering being done here. So, at this location only those passengers who are going in this direction or at this point the passengers who are going in this direction they are going to be there. So, depending on which particular direction we are going to work with it, we have to look at that what design is to be provided here. Now, one thing which is there is that when the uh, buses are coming from this side see and then uh, they can first of all being streamlined and then here the possibilities of docking or passing are given. Now, passing lane shall be provided at stations where demand is high, sub stops on the docking bay they shall be spaced by minimum 21.6 meters for 12 meter long buses and 32.4 meters for 18 meter long buses. So, that is a gap which is going to be there. Average spacing of stations it is minimum usually 500 meters, but it can vary within a range of 300 to 800 meters. Waiting area of the BRT station it shall have seating, lighting information etc. Ventilation should also be there. Illumination during the night time that should be minimum 150 lux. So, these are the design requirements. Here we can see that uh, uh, we have uh, this BRT docking station. So, this is sub stop 1, this is sub stop 2 and the gap between these is 21.6 meters. Whereas, if you have the bigger buses than the articulated buses then it is 32.4 meters. So, it is for 12 meter size and this is for 18 meter size and the passing lanes are being provided. So, if the bus is stopping here the another bus can cross this bus using the side lane. Now, the another point which is being shown is that uh, some of the cases these stations are going to be very near to the intersections. So, here we have a intersection. So, at what a distance they should be provided. So, this is minimum 40 meters from the stop lines which are provided towards the tangential line of the crossing road or at that intersection. And then whatever ramps are provided and in and out system are provided, but this whole area up to the junction can be utilized for the movement of the pedestrians. So, this whatever station width is there which is 4 meter take is taking the pedestrians to their these locations and they can move towards the other side using the intersection facilities. Now, let us come to the terminal design. Now, in the case of terminal design means uh, this is a location where lot many BRT buses are going to be there at any point of a time and they may be there in terms of a storage or a maintenance or they may be there in terms of uh, taking the passengers or the passengers are boarding or alighting for these buses. So, the concentration of passengers, the concentration of the buses, the concentration of the associated facilities that means, the way the passengers are coming to that station or the terminal area in terms of access facilities all of those things are going to be there. So, when you have these different type of things available at one location it means the size is going to be important, the location where it has to be provided is also important and the way the circulations are being defined and managed for different entities it also becomes important. So, at most of the time if you say that there is a terminal then that is an end of the corridor and this provides facilities for interchanges. Now, these interchanges can be BRT to BRT, this can be BRT to access mode systems or any paratransit systems or paratransit systems to BRT or access systems to BRT. So, all these options are possible and therefore, spaces are required for feeder services, paratransit services as well as BRT. Now, its location is decided on the basis of the passenger demand, the travel patterns and the size of the network. 
if the network is too big then you may need to have different terminal locations. If the passenger demand is quite high at different locations then also it may necessitate that we should have the terminals at different locations within the city on this BRT network. So, all of these things are going to be decided based on these traffic data travel patterns etc. The space for turnaround in multiple ways for simultaneous dispatch of BRT buses is also a requirement means a bus comes to the terminal area. Now, this bus has to go back. So, the turnaround is also to be managed or the pathway has to be designed in that form. Now, various administrative and passenger amenities are also going to be there and uh, the bus circulation time as well as the passenger movements which are there if we can reduce that time, if we can reduce the distances which needs to be covered by passengers to do all these maneuvers between different type of systems or within a system uh, that is going to be a good design. And at times one side of the platform can be used for BRT and another side can be used for a feeder service then it minimizes the movement requirements by the passengers and becomes quite convenient for them. So, here we have few of such cases what we can see here is that uh, this is uh, uh, one sort of a terminal where the buses are coming from here BRT but then this is an opening being provided with respect to the media this uh, ro rotary. So, the vehicles which are on the motorized vehicle lanes they can also enter from here and uh, here the buses are going to be parked and then there can be a passing movement also. The rest of the vehicles are keep moving on the outer sides and the same thing is happening here the turn around is being designed. So, the BRT bus which has come then it can take a turn and go out of the system or in this one here it can come here or the vehicles which are have come here to drop the people then they can come and then go out of the system here ok or uh, this BRT can also take a turn around and can be on the other side of the same platform. Here we can have another simpler design as we can see that we have talked about that the same platform can be also utilized for, say for a BRT and the feeder services. So, one side may be utilized for BRT and another side can be utilized for feeder services that means the entry is from one side and the exit is also from one side. So, BRT buses are coming from this one and the other type of buses or the IPT modes they are coming from the through using the another lane. This is another type design where the vehicles are coming in this form and they are going into this area or they are coming in this area depending on that whether they are uh, uh, BRTs or the feeder services and then a turnaround facility is also being provided. And if there is a requirement of providing the passing systems then at least 7.5 meter wide lanes that 2 lanes 1 3.5 meter and the 4 meter has to be provided. This is another such design again the same combinations are there that means there are different possibilities in which uh, the terminals can be designed it all depends upon the availability of land the amount of buses which are going to be there the amount of passenger traffic which is going to be there and uh, the way the various circulations has to be managed. Now, here in this case uh, the things are being defined with respect to the intersections. So, what we can see is that this is a BRT lane which is being shown in red. Here the BRT station is there, they are very near to the intersection. So, the pedestrian activity is being extended up to the intersection and then this BRT buses comes to an open area and then again gets into a dedicated lane system. So, this is how it is being managed. This is for a signalized area where signalized area means we have the cycle length and within cycle length we are going to have the phases. So, you can see that the BRT bus comes here in this direction it can go straight. So, our separate phase is being allocated to the BRT buses and as far as the designs are concerned of this intersection area there can be different designs as you can see here. This is another design being used. So, it all depends what type of amount of traffic, what type of turning movements are there accordingly the things can be very easily adjusted. And this one is also the same way the BRT dedicated lane which is a closed system crosses on this side a good system is being provided for the movements of the pedestrians and then the lanes dedicated which are being provided for the motorized vehicles. So, these are few other things which can be they are associated with the BRT system when it is operationalized. So, let us uh, close our discussion here and we are going to meet again in the next lecture where we are going to talk about the toll plaza facilities 
टिल देन थैंक यू एंड बाय